Okay, welcome <laughs> to the first meeting of the book club. Um, Hello. We're joined with old Nicky G over here, and then old Nico, Nico, Nico Hidalgo. Um, yeah, so we've wanted to do this for a little while. Um, because we're illiterate, our book club is mostly going to focus on videos, sports, or movies that are a little bit easier yeah. to digest over a short period of time, but I'm sure we'll get around to a book at some point. Um, yeah, so these first few series, these first few sessions, we're going to be looking at the NBA. So we've gone back to the 91 um, finals for our first for our first book, and that's what we're going to be covering for these next few series, The um, some of those classic finals. Finals games that we haven't watched and we know so much about. We know all the stats and who wins, but we've never actually sat down and watched them. So, yeah, that's going to be. Yeah, I heard all the stories. Yep. But like a normal book club meeting, we will devolve and talk about current events and what's been going on since we since we last caught up. So I thought we'd start. Nico uh, messaged me pretty great question the other day, um, and as usual, I was going to respond through text. But well, we're catching up for book club anyway, so why don't we start with uh, discussing that? So, Nico, do you want to read out that what you asked me the other day? Yeah, right. So, I think I think we've just been talking about like the basketball finals, and then out of out of nowhere, Kendrick drops a surprise feature, and then you know shakes shakes the world up a bit. So, I went back to Nikki G and asked. So if we go back to rap and hip hop for a second, have you heard Kendrick's this as a response to first person shooter, which essentially just means have you heard both and what do you think? Cool. So um, a little bit of context on that is uh, for those who don't know me, I am the whitest person you'll ever meet. But at the end of last year, I put together a big list of some of the greatest rap albums of all time, and it started off a really really short affair, and now is like. 600 albums hours I'm like, and, yeah. hours. <laughs> and i'm just i've just finished the 80s so taking a little bit more interest in rap and hip-hop um which kind of provoked nico's question um but yeah so we'll add a bit of context just if you don't know like the whole the whole deal with um kendrick yeah. and uh j cole and um and drake and drake um, yeah. somehow <laughs> yeah exactly um, <laughs> so at the end of last year um I think it was in October. Uh, J. Cole and Drake get on a track together, um, first person shooter. And one of the big lines from that is uh, was from J. Cole. Is it K. Dot? Is it Aubrey or me? We the big three, like we started a league. But right now, I feel like Muhammad Ali. Um, which honestly, I don't think was that controversial. Like I think everyone at the moment considers them the big three in rap and it's crazy that for the last like 10 years no one's really come along and we haven't had any like young 20 21 24 year olds come along and try stamp their mark it's like pretty hard to dethrone um yeah yeah well i think i think i think there's just less of a focus on that's what they want to do if that makes sense like i feel like these three are like the last three that actually well actually no that's that's a bit glad there are some but like they're, they're the they're the three that have actually continue to care about being competitive with it if that makes sense like obviously obviously the like the younger generation of it they they want to like focus on the vibes and how it sounds and does it go in the club and all that kind of stuff but like the the one the ones where they grew up on that and wanted to like show that they were more like more more skillful or this that the other and just talk their shit like i think I, I think they're they're the dying generation, if that makes sense. And these three are the ones that obviously have taken it a little bit more serious. I agree with you though. Like yeah. I, I don't think it's very controversial for him to have said it. I think there's other things, and it's weird because I didn't clock it at first. At first, I was just like, "Oh fuck, these these verses are so sick." But then it got to a point where I was like, "Oh nah, J like J Cole really was talking about Kendrick's like at, at, to a certain degree," and and it's not just random that Kendrick's gone and done this, which I think is cool looking back on. Yeah, but yes, I, I think that's it. Um, but the, my, one of my favorite things is that um, Kendrick did it on a Metro Boomin future record. Like Metro's got his own thing with Drake. So even like the fact that he put the feature 
on that was yep. sending a bit well, of and also the the fact that they well the way that they do it is they didn't announce like features and all that kind of stuff right, right. so like no one apparently so it's again it's, it's so it's so it's so busy like getting into this context without having prior knowledge short if that makes sense because i had no idea that drake and metro boomin or even drake and future were like even yeah. feeling like that you you hear them put out music like every fucking couple of years or something like that yeah yeah so like okay surely they're all good and then all of a sudden you're hearing you know like i think future and drake stuff is about a girl yeah and then metro i, I think metro just doesn't like straight up doesn't like him or whatever the, but then the more context yeah you find, i don't know it's, the more you find out about yeah. it the more petty it seems well, it, like I think, I think that's what makes it fucking sick is because you hear you hear how quality, like the quality of art that they make, and you, and everyone like just bigs them up, and they're like some fucking geniuses, and like you know s social status, this status, all the uh, all of it gets elevated just because of what they can do, and then at the very base nature, they're just the same as everyone else. Like it's so fucking cool. Like I I think that's the, the thing that like connects the most, if that makes sense. Yeah because yeah, yeah. like because we can paint these people out to be so like bigger than life and they fucking are like they deserve yeah. that because you know they they, they put that shit together and it connects but yeah it's for, just, just for them or just for you to be like so you read the story and you're like fuck same yeah. like i've done like i've been there <laughs> i just don't have the talent to monetize it <laughs> like that's it's just not a story apparently yeah. like <laughs> yeah um yeah <laughs> So one of my, well, so like the, the kind of the obvious, that first line from Kendrick and, um, yeah. um, and like that is fuck sneak this in first person shooter. And I fucking love that because like we were saying, it's not really that much of a controversial statement to say the big three, but Kendrick yeah, just yeah, immediately yeah. just, it's just like, nope, that's a diss. No, there's no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. to the, to the point of just being like, no. Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I I'm I'm still the one. Like, Motherfucker, you can't, big you can't three. Just say you're it's the one. Just big me. Like one <laughs> line. Like it's it's so good. Um, and, and I, I think I like I, I've been hearing I've been hearing people say like it because people would read the verse and suddenly just be like ah oh, like it was alright but then you hear how he's like put it together and obviously you hear it on a metro beat. And you got Future doing that fucking sick like hook that he always does like on his fucking like bangers, right? Yeah. So like, I think, I think if you just listen to it, or I'm sorry, if you read it, then it doesn't come across as any like he said anything sick. Yeah. But you fucking put it all together, and you're like, this is I, I feel yeah. like this is the best way to, for it to have kicked off. I don't I don't want Kendrick to just drop out of nowhere and have like 10 years worth of shit come out like come off his chest if that makes sense yeah. i wanted him to be like if we're if we're shooting shots then it shoot shots <laughs> yeah, but it's so funny you mentioned 10 years because like this isn't new information like kendrick's been saying this since 2013 so like uh in 2013 oh. on control with big sean he yeah. calls out all the the new rappers all the new mcs he lists uh, like who does he look? Um, he looks Jay Cole. I'm cool, I'm cool with you, but I want Mac like, Miller, like oh. Tyler. He just calls out everyone. It's like no, no, no. I'm in a, I'm playing a different game here. Like I'm. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. We're all rapping, but I'm rapping, yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm up here with the greats. I'm up here with Eminem and Nas. You guys are playing your own little game. Like have fun with your record sales. Like I have a Pulitzer, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did he have a Pulitzer at that point? Nah, not at that point. But like, he wasn't far yeah, off. Yeah, no, he got he got it he got it for damn. Yeah, yeah. He got it for damn. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Oh no no. Tim the butterfly. Tim the butterfly. Yeah, that makes more, way more sense. Yeah, you can tell that we know nothing about what we're talking about. But you know, yeah. we do. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I think it just reminded me of that. Uh, the message I sent you must have been around December last year. Um, just essentially saying like, I finally get it. Like rappers just rappers like putting together their cv like this is like this is what like their actually yeah, let me pull it up but yeah this is this is when we were talking about um dicky yeah like i finally get it like rappers just rappers trying to be the best like their <laughs> albums are their credentials and so they take this as so personal because someone's yeah 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 having a go at you no i'm, I'm laughing i'm laughing because like i didn't know that this text was going to come up you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, um, but it's, it's, 100%. It's, it's 100%. so funny to, three months later to have it like confirmed in real time. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 for it to just play out. Like, yeah. also, I, I, I hundred percent agree, and I think, I think that speaks to what you were saying before in terms of what Kendrick was saying. He's like, I'm playing a completely different game, and you're right by putting it that way. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because and and I think I think that speaks to what I was saying before about the big three is that those three are the last ones that like are putting their career together like that. If that makes sense, everyone else like especially the younger generation are kind of just putting shit out and like that's part of their rollout and this is their this is what they're feeling at the time. But I feel like these three are like well, I guess Drake's kind of like dropping way more than the other two. But I think especially J Cole and Kendrick have always thought about in the grand scheme of things like what does their body of work look like Drake definitely feels like he goes more for the commercial success like i can't remember what year it was but he put out like a new album like record every you know every week kind of thing um just yeah yeah yeah. and some of them might not have been of the highest quality where you feel like whenever kendrick puts out a verse or a song or fucking an album it's just going to be a masterpiece because everything is he, he's put it together. Like, yeah, really everything has that. a reason. <laughs> it's just so well thought out, and I think that's the thing. Yeah. Kendrick knows that if you're going to be in the goat conversation, you at least need to win your era. Same as when we'll talk about the NBA. Like, if you're going to be in that goat, you can't be if you're not like undisputed goat of your of your era. So, um, yeah, 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 when you walk in the room, people are like everybody no. else from the 2000s because he's like mm, uh, 2010s because like no, no, this is my time. Like, there's no big three. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I definitely agree with that. I think, I think that's where Cole. It's not, it's not a fumble because I, like, I love J Cole, but it's like the, the reason he doesn't win as much in those conversations just yet is because I think he's almost felt tentative to like really say some shit if that makes sense like for like kendrick in 2013 said that yeah. you know what i mean and he's like he doesn't he he's not playing game or he is playing games but he's not playing when it comes to being the best yeah and j cole just thought people would accept him as the best if that makes sense so i think i think his next this, this project is super important for yeah. where he stands there I think it's an important thing like because <clears throat> listening to all of these rap albums from Sugar Hill Gang at like the very beginning of it all. Even yeah. then, they set the template. They're talking about the bitches they have, the money they have, the car they drive, and like shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sixty years, um, and it feels like now that rap's become even more commercial, like it's constantly coming even worse. Like you, you're losing that element of no, no, no I'm number one. Like you get these guys come yeah. on and say it. it's like. But anyway, actually, though, where, where's the beef? Where are these two guys, like, you're missing Ronaldo. Where are these guys duking it out? Where's our... Yeah, where's, you know, where is the fucking... You know, yeah. where are these guys who are battling it out to be... Like, where's your Larry Bird and your Magic Johnson? Who's going to be the best of this era so that they can move on to the great debate? Yeah. Well, I think... I think... I think it's harder because, like the world changed if that makes sense like it used to really be like go at your neck it was like go at your neck and that's your fucking thought yeah but now you have to like kind of live with it i guess like you have to learn to coexist maybe otherwise go to jail i definitely don't know (laughs) yeah 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 exactly yeah that's a whole nother thing right yeah exactly um any other takes you want to add on to that before we move on to our book i want them to fucking like exchange tracks like like the old days like and i it doesn't need to get to like eminem dissing benzino or like that kind of kill you type track but it like i just want them to be like nah like but exchange and like go rounds instead of it just being like one and done yeah if that makes sense like i, I don't want jay cole to just be, like send one back and then kendrick's like oh give me eight years or something like that i want them to just be like check check a few back and forth and then if if it's not decided yet then don't like you don't have to go finish but you just need to see where you're at you know what i mean like i, I want to see yeah. where they're at yeah um and i think to answer your question uh what do i think about it i fucking love it and i think rap's been missing it for a little yeah. bit like especially because like i don't know over covid was that weird time where we lost like three years and we all got three years older and nothing really changed in that time <laughs> we've got this, like, we've got this weird dead space now especially in rap where you know the younger guys haven't come along obviously 
Kendrick, maybe not on his way out, but you know, you, he's not going to put out the level of like all the consistency of those great albums. Like he's his body of work, yeah, you yeah, snorted, yeah. and we might see a few things. But so then, who are these yeah, yeah, coming yeah. along? Who are the young kids kids seeing this beef now and going to be like, no, no, the rap's mine for the next ten years? Who's our yeah, yeah, like who's who's next? Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very excited. I, I do hope they exchange a little bit. I'm, I'm very excited for J Cole, because yep. he's, he's like been wanting this. Like, I think, I think for him, he couldn't have asked for like a better thing, because Kendrick is like literally passing him the ball and being like, "Let's play." Yeah, well, it's, it's like, like he's, a, he's, che- he's playing check, right? Yeah. Like Conor McGregor's uh, um, red panty night. Like, if you're in the ring with Kendrick, like that's your, you're, in, you know, you're part of the conversation now. Yeah, well, and 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 he's been saying it, and he's been preparing for it. Like J Cole's like in this album thing, so I'm like, I'm very, I'm very hopeful that like it pops off because it, it has, it's been like a week or something now, right? But I have no idea how you have a go at Kendrick Lamar. Like, I wouldn't even know where to start. It's hard, right? It's hard. I would not even know where to go. That's it's actually so true because you have to get like you have to go at him. Correctly in in that sense, because you know people automatically be having that conversation about like who who had like more bars or like who's lyric who's lyrically better than this that the other right yeah. like they're gonna break it down from that level, but then like do you do you try and like actually diss him and then he's already talking about how he's like paranoid, so he can't just have a like Kendrick saying he's like I'm too paranoid for a threat or whatever. So if you start talking shit like that. Like, do you automatically kick off some weird beef that you didn't want to be a part of? You just tried to lyrically be this, that, the other, and then suddenly you're, you know, you're in it? Like, or is that paranoid, I don't know. Is that paranoid lo- line more like, even if I have a whiff of you coming at me, I'm going to fuck you up so just to cut it at its knees before it becomes anything, like, real? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I like, and, and But that's what I'm trying to say is that, like, you're you're so right in the sense of how how do you even prepare a Kendrick like a track to go at Kendrick because there's so many ways that people are gonna have to like judge like so much criteria that people are gonna judge you on. You can, can do it all. <laughs> he's he's so fucking good, man. I I'd love to know how long Kendrick had to prepare this, though, if that makes sense. Well, like, like okay, like how quickly do you think he heard first person shooter? Came out in October, so okay, like, fair. I imagine it was more than a month. Fair. fair. So it's a quarter of a year. But but again, now that it's started, because like again, it wasn't a like a straight up diss. It was just like we're the big three, but I feel like I'm the best of those three. Yeah, it's I feel like really I'm a one. The fact that Kendrick came out with this verse, that's what like kind of lit it up. On on this project, yeah. like it literally, it literally ca- like I've seen all the like well, obviously everyone's seen all the memes of fucking yeah. the civil like the civil war memes and everyone's picking yeah. sides and like who do you think like you know which Avengers do you think is yeah. gonna win? Like I like honestly I, I've I've been like buying into it as well. Like I really hope that it just starts a massive like mm. you've just got this being shot. But that's like, the everywhere. thing Kendrick had let's let's give him benefit of the doubt. He had four months to prep this. But it's close, probably closer mm. to five or six months. Uh, yeah, 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 no, I like so, that. I like but that. now that like, it's he, he would have heard it pretty instantly. Yeah, he would have heard it. Drake and J Cole now don't have the luxury of, especially J Cole, if he's in the middle of recording, like yeah, somebody's got to come not allowed to... pretty quickly. Yeah, he's not allowed to duck it. <laughs> no. But well, they're saying Drake. They're saying Drake might not because he's on tour and he's got all those requirements to fulfill and all that kind of stuff. But like. I, yeah, I wouldn't mind if it was just those two. Yeah. Did you say boo? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. How how sick for it? Like if like I understand that they're like clicked up and they're performing together right now, but yeah. like how sick would it be if they just started like a three way battle rather than like J Cole imagine? side versus you know what I mean? It'd be like like it would Tupac, be sick if they just went. If Tupac was on tour, uh, sorry, just Biggie and Biggie's on tour, Biggie's. Gonna say something like, <laughs> "Hey, record that night, eh?" Like, "Fuck you, get yeah. high and do it." Fuck like, shit. Actually, I'm gonna put add a new show so I can do it tonight instead of tomorrow. Yeah, let me perform it instead yeah. of recording it and sending yeah. it to you. Let me perform it. Hundred percent. Ah, different time. <laughs> yeah. No, legit, legit though. Like, and I think, yeah. I mean, I already said it, but I think, I think the younger generation is different in terms of what they want out of it. Like, I think they just want 
they just want to come up off music instead of being like the sickest yeah 100%. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, should we stick with the nineties then? That's cool. Okay. So we introducing our first ever book for book club, um, the nineteen ninety one NBA Finals. Um, the Eastern Conference champions Bulls take on the LA Lakers out of the West, uh, with Chicago having home court advantage. So this finals was played over five games in June of nineteen ninety one. This would be Michael Jordan's first ever finals appearance. And the other MJ, Michael uh, Magic Johnson, sorry, his last. Um, so this was the last finals appearance for the Lakers until 2000, which, funnily enough, is going to be our next book in book club. Um, and this ended the Lakers Showtime era, where they won five championships and eight finals appearances. But was the beginning of the Bulls dynasty, where they would go on to utterly dominate the 90s. Cool. Um, so the year prior, the uh, Bulls lost in seven games to Detroit in the East Conference Finals. Um, uh, this current season, they had 61 wins. Jordan won his fifth straight uh, scoring title. But with Phil Jackson uh, and Tex Winter coming on board, they uh, initiated the triangle offense. And so Jordan's well, actually, the whole team's passing and movement improved. So Jordan won his uh, second MVP. Uh, for the playoffs, uh, their path for the final, the Bulls only lost one game uh, in the first three rounds. They swept the Knicks uh, in the first round, eliminated the 76ers in the second round, and then uh, beat the Pistons in the conference finals. That's that famous game where the Pistons walk off with like 10 seconds left on the yeah. clock, and then the Bulls get shitty for <laughs> not getting their so, so not hands. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, so. So I realized that like watching, it wasn't even game one. It was like game two, I think. And then the, I think they maybe briefly mentioned that they beat the Pistons to get here. Yeah. And then the memory like clicked for me and I was like, oh, this is the one, eh? And then I asked Mike, like Mike was sitting there watching next to me. Um, and then yeah, I was like, this is the one where he doesn't shake hands, right? And he's like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, like this is, this is it. Like yeah. I get it. Yeah. I've seen this in the last dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally like, you know what I mean? Like, I, like. Like I know, I know what happened, yeah. but I didn't have know the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. It was three, like it was before I was born. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So the Lakers, the prior season, uh, they won sixty-three games, but lost in the second round to the Phoenix Suns. Uh, Magic Johnson had won that league MVP that last season, um, but the team got rid of Pat Riley as head coach, um, and instead hired Mike Dunleavy, who kind of got rid of all of their, like, Showtime's Lakers stuff and went to, like, a more deliberate and measured way of playing. And they still won 58 games in the 90-91 season. Uh, they swept the Rockets in the first round, beat Golden State in the second round, and then they were versing the Trailblazers in the conference finals. Uh, the Trailblazers had been to the NBA finals against the Pistons the year before and looked like the team to beat out of the West. So it was a pretty big upset for the Lakers to beat uh, Portland. And they beat them in six games. So, yeah, everyone was expecting, I think, the Lakers and Magic Johnson to get it up over the Bulls. Um, it's kind of hard for us to look back on, but Jordan still had this. Yeah. Can he do it in the finals? Like, can he, you know, actually win a chip? Um, he had all these regular season accolades, but could he actually get it done? Um, and it's so, it's so funny to hear those kind of critiques when we just think of Jordan as Mr. Finals kind I of know, thing. Yeah, yeah, six and yeah, all finals. Like, just... Yeah, like you, yeah. I even so, puzzling enough, like having that coloring my watch back was interesting because, like, obviously he was fucking sick. Like you could see he was a different player. Like he was, he was fucking sick. But there were parts where, I, like, where, like he'd do something wrong, and I'm like, wait, what? Like yeah. he does something wrong because. I think I think like you were saying, it, like everything that I knew of MJ was that he was like perfect. Yeah. So even seeing like small silly mistakes, which was obvious and was gonna happen, like missing that game one. Yeah. Clutch. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? Like that. <laughs> and that, that's the thing. Like, I didn't think that was gonna happen. When you grow up on highlights and things, you forget that, especially basketball, is such a high. Well, actually, American sports in general are so highlights orientated that you forget that these greats do make mistakes, but. I think the thing that really stood out is in those games, like when he missed those shots or he turned the possession over, even the commentators like, oh, that's like a rare miss or this is a rare turnover. Like 
Yeah, yeah. Even at the time they were talking even, about even during yeah. the mistakes. Um, cool. Yeah, okay, no, one last little yeah. bit of context. Um, the Bulls had Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen as future Hall of Famers, um, but both of their coaches, Phil Jackson and Tex Winter, who kind of invented the triangle offense, uh, would go on to be Hall of Fame coaches. Though I guess you could say Phil Jackson kind of was in there as a player as well, having won two chips with the Knicks. Um, the Lakers had Vlade Divac, Magic Johnson, and James Worthy as their Hall of Famers. So three future Hall of Famers versus two. Um, but yeah, that's all the context I had. So hit us with your thoughts. Where do you want to start? Um, well, so the the way that this was like introduced as an idea was watching and seeing the difference between the areas, I think it was, and obviously just picking greats and picking great series to kind of... I think I think it was the idea of kicking off their dynasty or kicking off their reign as like the dude, right? And and the and the league. So yeah. I, I, um, I think we're, we're watching the first one. Say that again. Um, so, like, we're, we're watching Kobe's first one next. We're watching LeBron's first one. And I think we're going to go for the... Was it um, the Warriors? I think Dirk before LeBron. See Dirk? Okay, yeah, no, I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Um, yeah, no, yeah. I... I'm... If you start from the beginning of a dynasty, you get the ending of one. So we got, you know, the Pistons yeah. having won back-to-back chips, Magic Johnson's last finals. Whereas if we'd started with the end of that first Bulls three-peat, you lose a lot of context because it's just, oh, no, the last two years have been Bulls. So the whole... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they've just been like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's scared. Like, everyone has the Michael Jordan stories already. Like... Yeah. Whereas this this series, like, he's even kind of had the Lakers over the Bulls. So it was, you know, a little bit more interesting. And I think that will be the same, especially with Shaq and Kobe. I can imagine the conversation around that getting really stale for the commentators at the end of three year of entire domination. Um, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this new duo. To... What can they do? Um, yeah. Before like, we start, can, can actually, the NBA app was fantastic. So if anybody's listened to this, like the NBA app, you can go watch all of the past final series from the 90s up to present, and it's amazing. No adverts, the timeouts, like they whistle for a timeout and then they're playing again. So the games take yeah, an it's hour like and a half half. two and a half hours. It was the most amazing experience. I I had a little bit of a bug. I don't know if it was like I don't know if it was the app or just I don't know what was happening, but essentially it was just like crashing and it would like stop playing the game. I'd have to exit and you can't just like skip to a certain part of the game. Like you have to like fast forward and you can only like quadruple fast forward. So you hold that down for like eight. Like I get I get I got to like the fourth quarter and it would happen and I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> like, yeah. I have no idea what you're doing because on my window that had like a bar at the bottom, I could scroll along. Like it was super easy. Um, I was, I was playing it through the TV. So it's not like something I could click uh, on if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Um, the but, only problems I had is I'd have yeah, to, that was my bug. I'd have to refresh at the beginning because like the audio and video guard, I think. So like two seconds and I'd refresh and start again. And then it was fine from there. <laughs> um, then I had a search bar at yeah. the bottom made life so easy. Oh yeah, no, bro. Playing, playing it through the TV was buggy and I was yeah. getting so, like, I was like annoyed as yeah. like, <laughs> I think the, the one that went to OT, so it went to OT and there was like maybe 30 seconds left in the game. And I was like, all right, I know they win. Fuck yeah. it. Like, <laughs> When I was going through all that to see the last 30 seconds and maybe yeah, like yeah, two yeah. shots or something, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, all right, I get it. <laughs> so the NBA app through computer good, through TV not so good. Yeah, less, less good. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, we'll see if it was a me thing. <laughs> right. I, the 90s aesthetic was so good. Like, it was just so sick yeah. to see. Even like the, um, the grainy like visuals, like the NBA final well, like, logos so, and stuff was just so, nostalgia. Yes. I think I think um, seeing it on a big screen was like a little bit frustrating. Like towards the end of it, I was like, I can't wait till we get to a future series when it's like a little bit better. Like even if it's not like full on 4K or whatever, it's yeah, like yeah. it'll be sick if it's just like not gonna hurt my eyes to watch. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I've heard, <laughs> but when... I've heard that the late '90s and the early 2000s is the worst because that's when they were transferring yeah. over from film to digital. And uh, so the, yeah. well, I mean, know, they kind of yeah. perfected film and then they did drop down to this new technology of digital, which wasn't there yet, but they had to push it. 
And so, like, yeah, because yeah. that's where it was going. But yeah, it'd be really interesting to see next time with the Lakers um, in the 2000s. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, like, I, I caught myself thinking that, um, like, maybe game three or four or something like that. Like, I was yeah. like, oh, it'll be, it'll be quite cool to see it, like, get to where it gets to, yeah. if that makes sense. I will say on my computer, um, it's probably the perfect size screen, my little laptop. That, no, that, that actually does make sense. That actually does make so much sense. Like, it would probably be legit. Yeah. Um, and what you, you were saying about nostalgia in terms of like how it felt i definitely agree with that like even hearing the old theme song i like i remember turning to mike and i was like why did they fucking change this like yeah, this yeah. was the sickest one like this is so sick <laughs> yeah yeah for real um, <laughs> the i i buzzed out at how like in terms of a stark difference like i feel like the the crowds like as much as you can get crazy crowds in today's nba like, I feel like there was, like, a big, like, city pride thing that was happening back then when they were, like, like, everyone was kind of bought into it, if that makes sense. It wasn't just them to be there because it's an event or an occasion. It was, like, this is the finals and, like, Chicago versus LA type stuff. So they were quite, I, f- I felt like they were quite into it. Yeah, um, I get what you mean. But the Chicago crowd definitely felt more blue collar. Yeah, no, that's not quite right. They just felt more more city pride the lakers fans kind yeah. of when i watch the warriors games now felt like that it felt like a celebrity outing and even when the lakers yeah, were up yeah, there'd yeah. be cheers but it never really felt like oh uh, no no, no, no chicago game, that second chicago game with the lakers uh, sorry the bulls end up winning it right i would hate, hate to be a laker in that building though that crowd was yeah fucking nuts the fog horn the was saying, throws, yeah. it was it was crazy. yeah 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 good. No, I, I I definitely agree in that sense. So um, I think I think in my notes for game three or four or something like that was was saying that the the crowd felt dejected, like a little bit flat. Yeah. Like even like you say, even when they were ahead or even when even when they were going on a run, it, like as soon as it wasn't going their way, they kind of just like stopped. If that makes yeah. sense, like it wasn't back in the team. It was just like, oh yeah, this is cool. <laughs> kind of like crowds back home in New Zealand when we watch a rugby game or a football game you're there to watch you're the crowd you're there to be entertained whereas especially over in Europe I've noticed watching these football matches like the crowd is part of the match like the, there'll be sections yeah. just chanting the whole game because they are a part of the game and that's like yeah yeah like they, they hold disconnect. sway for the players and stuff yeah and that's that bit of a disconnect where Chicago felt like every person in that crowd felt like they were part of the team like every time they yelled would help the team and it's just that that made it such a good environment for yeah the bulls to be in yeah yeah no 100 percent um i i buzzed out at the format of it where you know how it was two three two that's what i was gonna say i buzzed i buzzed out of that for sure because i like i knew I, i think i knew that was a thing but i'm just so used to it being was it is it two just two twos all the way then one or one, one, one two? Yeah, two, two, no, there you go. Two, yeah, two, two, one, two, one, one, one. one. Um, one. But it makes sense, like especially back when travel probably wasn't as easy. Um, you had to like yeah. like your whole yeah. crew over there and all that kind of stuff. You yeah. didn't want to be moving back and forth. Um, was yeah. that, that that was another question that I had to Mike was were they like flying private at this point or they're probably still flying public, right? Like I, I think they were flying Actually, public. So I was like, oh. Surely they're probably less for the teams, like more for the production, like companies and stuff having to like move around and get set up. And oh things. yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But I, I, yeah, I meant for the team, like because you know, like there, there was there was definitely a point in time, like even footballers where they were flying commercial, right? Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't just full on private and all that kind of stuff. And then Mike was even saying like, bro, yeah, bro, like even in the eighties, probably like bus, like tour bus, and I was yeah. like, oh, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, it, 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 kind of a cool concept because it means you could be the, you know, the team without home court advantage, and you could go into game six with a lead, only having one at home. Like you, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I buzzed that. I buzzed out of that. Yeah, and I didn't realize that until I turned on game five that I was like, oh yeah, so this will be. And I wasn't listening to the commentators, or they must have said it multiple times in game four that oh yeah, yeah, for the Lakers for game five, and wasn't listening and. Turn on that last game. Look, this doesn't look like the right court. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, wait, wait, wait. Where's Jack? Where's Jack Nicholson? Like, yeah. Jack, Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Still Jack there. Nicholson. 
Um, yeah, anything that surprised you from game one or anything you wanted to mention about game one? Um, I think it's also, I think, so from the very start, um, the, the reason I mentioned that thing about going to different eras and seeing what the differences were, so obviously we covered nostalgia in that, but even from a playstyle perspective, I buzzed out at how fast it was. Like, they were running, like, they, like they were just running the court, like, the ball was fucking flying around, like, you know, you know how, I think, I think my biggest contrast was, like, today, I feel like in today's NBA, and what the NBA that I'm used to, they're so focused on being, like, efficient, right, so they're, like, they walk the ball up, they get into their half sets, like, people are setting up their defense, and then you go here, and you go here, and all that kind of stuff, I feel like, what these guys wanted to do was just run the ball. Like yeah. that was plan A. And if you if you got if you couldn't get there, that's when you set up your half court, and yeah. then that's when you play that that type of basketball. And I like I was a fan of that, but I was also taken aback by that. If that makes sense. And I think uh, maybe not a whole lot, but I think definitely part of that comes down to that physicality. Like noticing that physicality straight away. The hands on the defenders, like actually yeah. getting body. Like <laughs> you'd see a guy going to the hoop and like end up on the ground. And not getting caught. And it's like, holy shit, Giannis would have got five free throws just then. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ball, like, there's always people in the way. They, I thought, to be fair, though, they did they did get their calls in terms of, like, they, they got to the line. Or at least at least the Lakers got to the line a lot. More. Definitely. They, I, 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 like I, I haven't looked it up. I don't think the foul number would be any more or less than today. It seemed pretty similar. But it's not the total yeah, foul. Yeah, yeah. It's, num- it's the type of fouls being called. There was like, you know, there was a few tick yeah. tack fouls yeah. and like some like phantom calls. But there was no, you know, like James Harden like head flick back and trying to you know lock his arms <laughs> in the defender to get a foul call like shooting kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good laugh. Could, back the defense could actually <laughs> body players. It was so sick to see. Um, yeah, it, and it made the game different yeah. because if you knew that the defense can actually, you know, defend. You didn't want to set up in a half court. You wanted to try to get a five. Yeah, right? you don't want to give them time, right? Like yeah, you don't exactly. want to give them time. Yeah, you want to counterattack. And that's what that's what made the um, showtime Lakers so good. Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they they got down, yeah, it was done. They were scoring. Yeah. Um yeah, so I was I super surprised. Super surprised at the passing. Everyone talks about um and what's it's been mailmen and they sucked and it was all about you know, Jordan would take, like, 50 shots a game or whatever. And obviously Magic Johnson's, you know, one of the greatest passes ever. But, like, even Michael Jordan's passing, some of those assists and, like, these needle-thin gaps were crazy. And you can see uh, Phil Jackson's, like, triangle offense, like, the amount of passing. You can kind of see that having rubbed off on Steve Kerr and the Warriors. Like, um, yeah. just that passing and that movement around, trying to find that extra pass for the kick out for the better shot um yeah 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 no i um so uh, again going back to obviously i was surprised when mj would make a mistake but like i you, you could tell like from eye test and this is not from someone that played or watched or did too much basketball this is just like a dude watching basketball and understanding that this dude is somehow better than everyone else i can't tell you how but it just felt like he was always making the right decision yeah. you know what i mean like it it was never felt it never felt like he was forcing it it was really interesting to hear the commentators talk as well, like because obviously Jordan is same with Kobe, like king of that mid range jumper. Um yeah. and even hear the commentators say, Oh, last season he probably would have taken that shot, but he, you know, found Pippin for the open dunk. And, you know, he probably yeah. would have scored it. But getting you saw like almost every single game, Jordan started so slowly, would have like one or two field goals in the first quarter and just tried to get everybody else involved. So that by the time it got to the fourth quarter, everyone's hot. Jordan knew that he could heat up. Um, and yeah. you can just see from what the commentators were saying that change, that shift in his mentality from, you know, the late 80s where the balls of bombs I'll yeah. carry to, oh, no, yeah, 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 yeah. a good roster around me. Let's get everyone involved. Yeah, no, 100%. But, like, I, like I, you, you could definitely feel that. I think in game one, the, the note was he, he did attack. Like, he, it, felt, it felt like a very emotional game and very, like, everyone was just out there to, like, see how they matched up right like they they were just running and going for it and gunning it so uh, I, I think that's where he may have lost his way in terms of trying like in terms of the game plan or maybe that maybe that was the game plan for game one you know what i mean yeah. um but i i, I definitely agree in, in the sense of 
the the passing that the I think this the way they talk about the old days is that they don't have the same skill set as today, and I hundred percent agree. But I think that they they were they were way better at getting the ball in the paint because that's where they the, the majority of their scoring. Now the guys are just better at like everything all around because they played the game way longer. You know what I mean? Like from a younger age, so of course they're gonna get like be more skillful with the ball or all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and you've also but got I more I, I agree with you. Play style on. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, hundred percent. Like, like you have you have more to mirror or copy and or train yeah. under. Like, we're, but like we're bro, they, they were so sick. There's some kid right now, uh, training to be Steph Curry from birth, essentially. You know, Steph. Had, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, change the game on his own, like lead this three point revolution where these kids are going to be chucking up fifteen threes a game from high school. From halfway. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, okay, and that's what cracked me up. Game two was the fucking funniest. The amount of times they would pull up for a long two, and I don't just mean long yeah. two. I mean like you take half a step back, you're on the three step. point line, bro. Like, uh, who was it? I think it was Paxson, bro. Paxson, Paxson does it all the time. But he, was, but he I, fucking I, kills it. I love that dude. He was eight for eight on long twos. It's like. That, yeah, that's an extra eight points you've just left on the floor. <laughs> but, but but like it was the it was the like the execution of him getting into that step and knowing that that was his range and it was just automatic and bro he pulled up like so big when it fucking mattered and I was like so the I, whole the whole time I found I was like oh my gosh like this guy's sick like. <laughs> Knowing what we know, that three points is more than two points, whoever would have guessed. If he had just tried <laughs> a little bit extra for just that little bit further back. <laughs> uh, no, I 100% agree. Like, oh, it was so funny because obviously we, we see it from that perspective in terms of, like, there were so many times when I was like, oh, that's an open shot. And they just, like, it wasn't even on their mind. Like, you could tell yeah. from their body language yeah. that they weren't ever thinking about shooting. But in today's NBA, you're like, bro, they've pulled up for three and they've probably made it they're already on their way back yeah. like so i i buzz that i buzz that at that concept but i 100 percent agree in terms of the way that they can get the ball into the paint and then score it i think that they they might be better yeah like um, even 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 the big dudes with their footwork and all that kind of stuff like they they talk about fundamentals and all that kind of stuff but it's like bro when you see it you're like nah they have a point like these dudes are sick with it <laughs> why it's so hard to compare errors because like I think all the big men like Jokic and Giannis would be fine in this era. Um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, Steph already gets mauled on the attack. I, I'm not sure if he lasts the whole season with this physical defense and it not get caught. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I can 100% agree with that. I think, I think, I think you can give him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt, like in terms of he showed he showed that he's willing to fight for that. So I think there'll be part of him, especially if he was born in that era where he would be a little bit harder and a bit bit tougher for it. But and and then I also think like, oh, he fucking shoots the shit out of it. So and I think <laughs> if he was anybody in the top twenty conversation of all time is going to be fine no matter what era you throw them in. Like they're the great yeah, yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, like they 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 would have figured it out no matter what rules they had and all that shit. Like that, yeah. that was the point of them being that great. Yeah. Um, the Lakers still first game at home. That fucking I think it was worthy with the winning, the winning shot was. Yeah. Yeah, was yeah, yeah. Wasn't it a three as well? Like three to finish it, and then Jordan can't score down the other end. Um, also, and that's what I mean. Like I was so shook that he missed. Yeah. Like I I I like. With with everything that I had heard about and knew going into the series, when it came to that moment, I didn't think he was going to miss. I like I I don't know who won which game, so I think that that helped in terms of that element of surprise. But I was like, oh yeah, like surely, right? Like, <laughs> this yeah, is one of those NBA times. didn't tell you. Like it kind of gives you a synopsis on the game beforehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the title of it, the, yeah, the, the title of the, the episode. I don't want a spoiler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's spoiler enough that there's only five videos up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that cracked me up. Uh, game two was fucking sick. That Chicago yeah. crowd at the end of game two, like they'll be livid that the game, like the series, never got back to them because that crowd was going off. Uh, 
Jordan still a final record, yeah. 13 field goals consecutively. <laughs> so I mean, Oh, bro, no, nah, that run was hot. But I, he I, was going. He I was remember, just... I, I started writing it down at 10 field goals, and I was like, oh, Jordan, 10 field goals. That's real impressive. Oh, had to cross it out. 11, no, 12, no, 13. <laughs> and it's, it's still a record. And I remember the commentators at the time being like, oh, yeah, these stats are really hard to find out, so we can't actually find out consecutive buckets in the playoffs, but, like, he's couple behind for if it was regular season but yeah still a playoffs record like hardly any dunks either he was shooting mid-range yeah jumpers. no no he was shooting yeah now when, then... when they when they got in full flow and pa- bro honestly i like paxton got a player of the game or whatever for one game on that last one but holy crap the whole series bro he was pulling up huge yeah and i kind of want to watch the third bulls repeats i have a feeling like you're Players like Steve Kerr are going to be that for that second Bulls run. Um, they just yeah, had yeah, all yeah. these players yeah, that knew exactly what their role was, knew exactly when the ball was going to come to them, and just executed. It was so good to just, see. Just, just knew they were in a good situation and just showed up. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And then um, Jordan's famous... Hold on, I lost you there. Can you go again? Uh, I didn't say much after no. that. I just said they... You knew what they're up to. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's famous which hand layup finish off the game. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was so sick. sick. I Tell still don't understand how you do that. Like, in media, well, on to, the fly. To think, of it, to think of it, first of all, and then do it. Crazy. Yeah, and execute. Exactly. Um, and then, yeah, then after kind of game two, it just, I don't know, the Lakers would go ahead, but it, even... When the Bulls would start slow, it never felt like the Bulls were out of it. And every every yeah. quarter, I'm, I expected them to go on a massive run and somehow be 10, 15 ahead. And the fact that the Lakers yeah. kept it so close was sick. Like, they were just going bucket for bucket at times. But, I don't know, maybe it's just with the it mindset was, that we knew. It was usually, usually only up to half time, though, right? Yeah. Like, it felt really... Like, when, when it was competitive, because even... I guess even Game 2 was only blown out in the third quarter. But I felt like when it was competitive, it was up to half time, and you're like, okay, this this could be a good game, and it it generally was a good game, even if you know who won. Yeah. But like, yeah, it it always felt like as as you got towards the end of games, the Bulls were just good for it. Was the thing? Like they would just work. I think besides game two, which ended up being a blowout, they were pretty close. Like it was a pretty good game, and game three went overtime, but it went to overtime, and sorry, Jordan was like. Two from 11 or something like ridiculous. He'd missed nine in a row. And it was still close. Like, so when your star player's not perform or like, you know, as his shot's not falling and you're still that close, you must be fucking terrified as the Lakers. And the fact that it. Yeah. Well, so that was in, that was in my game three and four yeah. notes as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly the same. And, um, and the fact that the, you know, the Lakers were that little bit older, you know, Magic Johnson was coming towards the end of his career. Jordan was just starting up the Bulls with that little bit younger. They were probably yeah. happy to keep the pace high in that first game, like we said, to let the Lakers have it. Because you saw the Lakers get tired, more tired and more tired. And even though it went to As it went, overtime, yeah. by the end of overtime, um, you know, the Bulls had pulled away by like six or eight, you know, with a minute to go in overtime. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, yeah, the longer the game went on, you felt that, yeah, you felt like the Bulls were going well, even... to take it. Even the series, even the series. So the, there was one, I forget I forget when, but I think it was maybe game three or four, where even just going into halftime, the Bulls were like, you, you know that cliche-ass thing when you're playing and you're like, run, in, run into the changing rooms, boys, it's halftime, let's have our meeting. Like, they they ran in and the Lakers were like, still just walking, looking tired and all that. I was like, bro, there's a reason why, it, like, there's a reason why they won this game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like... I think at game four, I think the Bulls were up by 12 at going into the third quarter. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then kind of from there, I like I had no doubt that game five was going to go that same way. And it's um, and it's so hard as well because we're talking about how much aura Jordan has and how much we knew about him going into it. But Matt yeah. Johnson had that same aura at the time. So yeah, one, ten, yeah, 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 yeah. Johnson was like the best winner since bill russell like he was you know so to see him being on four consecutive defeats on the losing team in a series was kind of hard to wrap my mind around knowing what i know about magic johnson and how much he changed the nba 
Well, see, uh, one of the things that buzzed me out about the series as well is that yes, yes, Magic was pushing it, and I think, I think some of his earlier highlights were probably a little bit more groundbreaking in terms of the way that he played. But I, I kind of laughed sometimes at some of the passes he was doing because sometimes he was just like turning his body weirdly just for show if that makes sense like there was no re- like it made no sense for him to do it and and it sometimes just looked like a little bit unco where i was like i'm so used to hearing this war of magic in terms of it being like like perfect or like a show right and but for me some of the passes looked like a little bit unco just for no reason and i was like okay that's fuzzy that he's Playing like that, if that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, we were saying about uh, Magic Johnson contorting his body. Um, I think what yeah. I, was, I think what I was going to say is um, that like once you've got a, once people know you for contorting your body and crazy passes and stuff, you can do those crazy moves and then pull off a simple pass just to throw the opposition. Like playing those mind games. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think I think that's fair. Yeah. And to cuz cuz that is towards the end of his like tenure, right? Like that that's that's what he was Yeah, I yeah. I, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um but like even we were saying like in that in that game 5, the Lakers really missed uh James Worthy. Um, oh, no, no, they are back in. Sorry. I yeah. didn't see the boys. Yeah. Um yeah, they really missed Worthy, but like they kept it close that whole game and I kind of expected the Bulls to run away with it, but somehow like the you know the Lakers kept it on it. Um, yeah. Well, so one of my one of my notes in like game three and four was them not being able to trust their bench has really hurt them because that you could like you could see Magic getting gas and then Worthy's like out injured and all that kind of stuff. But then you like you play game five and the bench dudes were like playing all good. Yeah. So maybe they could have trusted them a bit more. Yeah. But I mean that obviously that's hindsight. Hindsight. Yeah. But like. Yeah. And that's what we were talking about before about Jordan getting the whole team involved early and meant coming down the stretch yeah. that he was a little bit fresher, everyone was in their yeah. groove. It was just a better team performance. Because um, the, the way uh, everyone everyone talks about how you can't switch it on, yeah. but bro, sometimes he just did, right? Like some of those games, I was like, oh, he's not having a great game at all. And then he'd still end up with like 30 points, and you're like, well, shut the fuck up like yeah. <laughs> and then yeah I, I said that a couple of times in my notes in the first and second quarter <laughs> even i think it was game two where he played average you know the rest yeah. of the team stepped up and it was a close game regardless so yeah um did you have a player of the series outside of jordan magic and pippen i uh, paxton yeah you've mentioned paxton a few times he, he was so good he, he just did his job well just did his job but also like like wasn't a liability. Like he he what like he he got his fouls like de- like defensive fouls or like the offensive fouls called in his way if yeah. that makes sense. So like he wasn't like a gap. Yeah. He wasn't a gap in the defense. Oh, yeah. bro, that's one thing that I loved about like as much as we're talking about play of the thing. I loved the defensive awareness, the defensive effort, the defensive like teamwork orientated feel that they had yeah. because. Again, we like looking at this in a way of comparing it to how it looks today. The defense, like people will just do their job today yeah. because that's their assignment and that's what they were told to do, and they want to play efficiently, and that there's a reason why. But bro, if like they were full court pressing, and if someone slipped their man, the next man came up. Other dudes running back to catch a man that wasn't that that's been left open. Like it was fucking sick. Like that level of teamwork, even if it's just five dudes, it was so fucking cool to see. Yeah definitely helped that the floor wasn't as spread you didn't really have guys just sitting for like pocket yeah. threes so you know yeah, yeah, yeah. it was that much smaller that it made you know clogging the interior a viable option yeah yeah no that that's fair but i th- like i think i think seeing it on the on the counter like we say on the counter but people are still trying to fill the gaps yeah like there, yeah. there's something there's something super like only the championship teams have it yeah. And they have it more than any other team, right? Because that, that, like, that's why they became that yeah. the champions that year. Yeah, um, it's so cool. It's so cool to see. Yeah, it gets talked about so often as well. But Magic Johnson being a po- kind of a point guard at six nine is such an asset because you know he 
square up to his defender and he can play these passes over the top super easily because he's so tall and yeah. i think at the beginning yeah, of the game, um, <laughs> i think because it was billed as uh jordan johnson um a whole lot of that first game jordan was defending him and it just was such a mismatch but when they switched pippin onto him he didn't struggle they still had like double team him at times but you know yeah. that, that was a really big swing for the for the bulls yeah, it's like that Iguodala and LeBron thing yeah, for the exactly. Warriors, right? Like, yeah. like having the right matchups matters yeah. at, at at that point. Yeah. Like when you're, I think that's one of the cool parts is where, like, it, I mean, I see it in fucking video games and shit today as well. Like, but when you have to play like seven games against each other, there's no surprises anymore. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know what the dude's gonna do because he's been doing it all fucking seasons. So, yeah, like, it's not you know what I mean? like, anymore. Yeah, I, I I love I love that detail, but it's it also must be super like frustrating to to execute on, yeah. knowing that everyone knows what should be happening. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, which is why we love those game, you know, seven game series. It's that little bit different. Like we love the yeah. Champions League and the World Cup as well, um, but to actually have seven games where you can't fluke four wins, like you have to yeah. earn earn yeah. those wins. <laughs> Yeah, so much fun. Um, is there anything that really surprised you about the series or like the presentation or the broadcast or just anything that like surprised you? Oh, I hated the fucking way the scores popped up. I thought that from game one and I still think it now. The way in, like they score a bucket and then the overlay comes up on the screen and like covers like the bottom third of the screen and yeah. you're like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, the overlay was probably too much. But I really enjoyed not having the score on the screen constantly. I found that really? yeah, I found that I would worry like think about the score in those first couple of games quite a bit. Um, but then as I got later in the series and I got used to it, I found that I was just enjoying the basketball for what it was. You'd see you the back, back to back and then you would get the score and you'd be like, Oh fuck, I thought the Bulls were like pin up here and it's like a one point game kind of thing yeah um, it, fe- it felt a certain way but then you see the score and you're like oh wow yeah oh, it, buzzy. yeah and it, i kind of got into the basketball more than the game if that makes sense yeah yeah no no, no i i get that like the execution of it rather than yeah like wh- who's winning or this that the other and because the the scores wouldn't come up every bucket so it would be like the, the lakers and bulls would go back to back like bucket by bucket five or six buckets in a row and then the score would come up um, and so I was yeah, more yeah, interested yeah, yeah. in the actual play and the game and the the break yeah. as opposed to oh what's the score now what's the score now who's winning what's what's the difference also I I don't I don't think I found myself wanting this like wanting to see the score so much I think the thing that bugged me was that it just popped up and covered like I, it didn't matter what the score was to me at that point it was just the fact that it came up and covered like the bottom half of the screen of the and I know it's not like yeah you know what I mean like it, it, like it, it it deterred me from doing what you felt like you were doing yep. by the scoreboard not being there, yep. if that makes sense. Yeah. But on the same token, not having fucking ads pop up every two seconds was oh, amazing. <laughs> uh, all, all, ad, all ads and then breaks. And it, like exactly what you said before, where like any time where you felt like it would have been a chore to watch, yep. it, would, it just carried on with the game. But even just the comment <laughs> going, oh, and this is the Kia free throw brought to you by the Kia Sorento. It's like, shut the fuck up. Like, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. Even the, um, the kits, the jerseys, yeah. no logos. NBA. Yeah. yeah. Name, yeah. number. So good. And like, but, obviously, that's because the NBA wasn't the product it is now until kind of the end of the night. Yeah. Thanks to Bird and Johnson and then thanks Jordan the and the Bulls. <laughs> um, so obviously they've monetized it and that's what they've got to do. But I don't know, you, again, you've almost lost that aura of it's about the game. Kind of that same thing with yeah, about the score. Yeah. I was talking about the score, like with the ads always popping up. Like I don't know, or even the thank God there's no betting odds. <laughs> you know, I, I, oh, I, 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 I like my game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bro. Uh, tangent. Um, the Premier League posted. Um, this is why Rain, Wayne Rooney is one of the greatest of all time. Like it's just all two hundred and eight of his goals. Got up to like goal eighty something, but there was it was so funny that you talk about betting in the middle of the game because at Old Trafford. Like the boards, um, like the advertising boards, yeah. the uh, like electronic ones, um, 
bit uh fred fred says there's a bit that's like fred bets or whatever the fuck it's called but fred says there's a, there's a bit that wayne rooney's the next person to score and that's like playing or that scrolling through the ad boards as wayne rooney's like cutting through the fucking left flank he cuts it and bangs it yeah. and i was like that is so sick like this dude is running on a football field scoring a banger and this is like advertising board saying that yeah i bet you this guy's gonna score next yeah <laughs> so yeah i i can't stand it and like i don't know we're seeing what's his name otana and the major league baseball like getting called up uh, like sports betting yeah. and i don't know there's just so much sports betting stuff especially with the nba nba has got to be one of the worst culprits for it um and yeah. the nba had a scandal with you know their refs like 10 20 years ago and some of the refs that were involved are still riffing now and so i can't believe they're letting it get integrated so much into the game um when we know that so many people are addicted to betting and you're just gonna plaster it everywhere and willing to like throw and dust that the other yeah and it it feels like all those like pandorica boxes you're not gonna be able to put that back in like it's 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 out there now yeah 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 are you gonna reel that back once they're allowed to yeah once they're allowed to there's a precedent yeah um no uh yeah yeah no i i I agree i agree in that sense i just thought it was it was fucking sick wayne rooney scoring a bear like (laughs) they call there's like a whole website dedicated to you like you're gonna be the next to score (laughs) yeah bang um but yeah the it's a great video though yeah that series was so much fun to watch though man i thoroughly enjoyed it really Mm. looking forward to our future books because it was just um being able to sit down like i smashed the first one out waited a couple of days then smash two or three out in one day kind of thing it was just so much so fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it was it was you were like i'm um, watching game oh, i think did you send a photo of game one yeah i think so i think you had it at the start <laughs> yeah and then like a couple of days later you're like i think this is the first time i finished my homework early i was yeah. like holy shit yeah, like, yeah. let's go yeah and just got to spend <laughs> and, the, and as i said before week. like i was excited and just got to re- spend the rest of the week fucking around with graphics and stuff yeah 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 well i mean and that, that's what i'm trying to say is that like yeah going back to the very very start of this like seeing that progress yeah. the way that it has i uh yeah there, i was like yo this is sick like <laughs> uh any parting <laughs> thoughts on our this week's book um yeah no i i i thought it was real cool like as much as we called it homework yeah. Like, I thought it was real cool to have something like that, if that makes sense. For sure. Like, like to, yeah, get, not get through it, but like, go and experience it and have yeah. notes to talk about and all that kind of stuff. Like, I thought that was cool. Knowing that we're going to be talking about it at the end of it all. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And like how, yeah, how you experience it versus how I experience it. Was, yeah. Yeah. I think that, I, I think, yeah. That was cool. Yeah, I think I, it's I look forward to the next it's got episode. me very excited for this series and where we go from here. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Because, because, like, yeah, it could go anywhere, and generally football, probably football, yeah. and then everything else that we find interesting. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's going to be the funny thing when you message me about, um, you know, first person shooter and you know Kendrick's track. Um, I wanted to respond straight away and so to then yeah. like peel it back and be like i'll add it to the agenda and we'll, we'll... yeah 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 well and um, and again going back to what i was saying like the agenda i was like it's fuzzy that i knew that there was that the agenda was building like you were giving me so much context and like so much um advice yeah. that it was happening yeah but i never once thought to just be like oh what else have you added like, <laughs> like... well let's find out shall we yeah yeah <laughs> um so i think uh, yeah like we were saying at the very beginning we're not experts on basketball by any means i wouldn't even say we're experts on football but we definitely know football more than we know basketball so at some we point know, in every, we know football though. yeah at some point in every um book club i assume football is going to be mentioned um especially yeah so we I had the so. yeah we had the international break over the last week um so i'll pull up a few clips just uh kind of a few big moments uh yeah that we got to see so yeah let's have a look at some of them now Savio venturing forward challenge there by rashford could open up here vinicius junior is away from johnston thought for sure he was going to score that 
there's no there's no way England can keep up with John Stones and Harry Maguire at centre back. I'm sorry. Like as I know this is I know this is about Indrek. I know this is his moment, but holy shit. Yeah. Everywhere else in the, on that field, England have like a top whatever you want to call them of their position. And then you've got John Stones and Harry Maguire at centre back, bro. But a lot of that's on um Southgate as well for continuing to pick them and then continuing to play them that way that you know it's so boring you've got some of the best attackers in the world and you're going to play boring football like that um yeah. eke out these one nil results yeah yeah like to to try and want to yeah it's not the way that you want to want to cut no. not to not 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 the way you want football to come home yeah exactly <laughs> cool <laughs> okay uh let's go clip two Quite well, I know more. Fabrizio Bruno also. There's Andrew! We're a little bit stuttery, but that's okay. The boy wonder strikes again. Um, so right, was... I, I said it before, but seeing that clip, everyone, like, Richarlison scored a couple goals at the World Cup, and everyone was like, Richarlison! <laughs> scoring goals, and then Richarlison has to be like, good job, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Um, great, yeah. So I was lucky enough to be at that game. Crazy game to be at three all. Um, I feel like half the crowd there was Portuguese anyway. Um, sorry, Brazilian anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was so cool. Um, but yeah, and I'll play this last clip before I talk. So yeah, there's something that kind of links all these clips together. So yeah, last one here. And so this was England, Belgium. It needs to be good, and it needs to happen now from their point of view. Watkins well, tusting for it. Madison collects it. Here's back. Oh, stick it on the Get out of jail card. Yeah. Bloody Bellingham. Um, yeah, and so that was to tie it up at the end of that game. I don't know who picked the blue and brown kits for Belgium. Looked absolutely terrible. Kind of looked like there was a little bit of a handball in the box as well. Um, but the reason I picked those three clips is um, there's a saying that the Brazilians have, so obviously in Portuguese, and I'm going to butcher this, but it's a bola procura a craque, something like that. But it essentially means like the ball finds the best on the field. So they used to use it heaps for El Phenomeno, um, but especially with Endrick, they, they've been saying it recently because it's just like the ball always seems to bounce them. So whether it's good positioning or good luck or whatever, the ball always yeah. finds the best player. Um, it's almost like yeah, at that championship moment, season. At that time. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's it just so appropriate. Like with what Bellingham's done this season as a midfielder for Real Madrid, and um, what Endrick yeah. looks like, the player he could be, the next Pele, whatever they're calling him. Um, so yeah, I just thought that was like yeah, super appropriate for for this for those clips. No, hundred percent. Like I, I I definitely agree with that, but like. It, it it does feel like it's one of those things where all the stars just seem to be aligning and they're just going to do some fucking outrageous shit. You know what I mean? Like, it, it feels like one of those rounds. Yeah. Or at the start of one of those rounds, you're like, oh, this is going to be a team, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and because we've, we've talked about previously just through our message about how Real Madrid, how they've built this team, um, how they're already looking like a solid team and you got Endrick and like the players they're looking to bring in and Mbappe and whoever else comes. It's just looking like such a good project, especially compared to you know their rivals in Spain, Barcelona, who are in financial trouble and like have to struggle for every signing that they're making. And Real Madrid, they, they're getting injured, time. bro. <clears throat> yeah, such a yeah, uh, such, a, such a funny situation. Did you so? Did you see um, Davies? And the contract situation with Bayern? Bayern, he just wants too much. Well, well, I guess so. But they've apparently they've given him an ultimatum. Like, you know what I mean? Like that. Apparently they're giving him like a you have to sign this or or else. Well, there's a and he he's wants this much money, and they're like, look, Muller's not even on that much, and like he's like one of yeah. the best in our club's history. Um, yeah, but he, but he hasn't really been performing for them either. Like maybe if it was a season yeah. or two ago, he might have got it. Maybe, but like this season, he's been. Pretty average, and Bayern. Average. We'll talk about this in a second as well. Bayern aren't going to win the league for the first time in like a decade. Yeah. 
And it's so like basically what, what's, what's, your defeat, leverage right? here? what's your leverage mate like we're going to have a new manager next year yeah. there's no way Tuchel st- sticks around so like you, you've got nothing like go, go to Real Madrid if they're going to pay us for you that's it but I, I think I think he's one of those dudes that if he's on a winning team he shines even more if that makes sense like he's he's like a yeah but like easy to be good on a good team like you need to be performing when the team's playing shit if you want those big money contracts oh no no, no. i 100 percent agree but what i'm saying is that as much as as much as he maybe doesn't deserve the money at bayern i think he goes up a level at real and that's easy to say because most people would but yep. there's also people that fucking fail right yep i think I think he's one of those dudes that once, he, like, if he gets put into that system, he's gonna fucking kill it. He's yeah. he's got Mbappe playing in front of him. Yeah. Three people are worried about Mbappe, and he just gets to go. Yeah. <laughs> um. But talking about, um, talking about the Bundesliga, my bloody boys, Alonso looks like he's staying at Leverkusen uh, next season. Um, so but, glad he is. Which is a coup in itself, which is amazing. Um. And then the boys thanked him by getting that 91st minute goal uh, to beat Hoffenheim. What, what a story, eh? What it a was fucking it 87th story. minute. You're 1 0 down. Yeah. You're about to lose your first game of is it the season? Yeah, they haven't lost all year. <laughs> all season, sorry. Yeah, nah, this, yeah. Is, this is one of those stories that you do want to like. like I, I always rated him as a player. Yeah. And I'm so glad that he's not trying to rush no. into like a Liverpool job. We've seen he's it not happen- trying to rush into a Bayern job. We've seen it happen so many times. I feel like Chelsea are the biggest culprits where they call up the, you know, we just had it with Potter, has a good season with Brighton, um, gets, yeah. and then yeah, you never fair. hear from them again. Yeah. Um, yeah, so sick. And then um, but for the first time in like, since I can remember, Dortmund beat Bayern at Bayern. Um, when there's no pressure on them, like they, they didn't need to win that game, they couldn't do it last season, and they pulled out. The but they team. wanted to, yeah. <laughs> but they wanted to, bro. Yeah. I like I I rate that so highly. Like, and and this is why I'm like, I'm real glad that it's happening for him, and that he seems to be making the right decisions. Yeah. yeah. Instead of the one that we've seen doesn't work. Yeah. And obviously, the funniest part like, of that whole thing. For him. The funny part of that whole thing is that Harry Kane now goes to Bayern to not win a trophy is got to be the best story I've ever heard. And and Liverpool don't get their man. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <It's the truth. laughs> and they lose Klopp. It's fucking perfect. Oh my gosh. Um. Yeah. No. I. I. I wouldn't put pressure on him to win again. I wouldn't be surprised if he wins again. Like if he just does another dominant run. Yeah. Because, like, Bayern will will be having to go through a rebuild. Sancho, I don't know what the fuck Sancho's going to do. With that. Is he going to end up in Dortmund? He probably will. I don't know how much they're going to pay. Just get rid of but, it. Take him off our hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't put pressure on him to do it again. Like I said, he could fully do it because he's fucking sick. But I was thinking that how cool is it that him versus Arteta looks like it's going to be the Klopp and Pep? How cool! Like the next yeah. Klopp and Pep. Yeah, and and they're both Pep students. Like, yeah. fucking sick. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. The future of football looks good. Oh, it looks so good. Yeah, um, I, I and think I think I think the money I think the money part is about to crumble on us. Yeah, in ways that we don't that that we don't understand. Yeah, I think the football side is definitely going to be sick. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure if you saw, but for the the new Club World Cup format, um, every team no. that that's in there gets 50 mil now. But it means I think Europe yeah. has like, and it's every I think it's once every four years. I'm not sure, but like Europe has like four, maybe five or six teams going. So the past four winners and yeah, they get two coefficients. Right? Yeah, so everyone gets a yeah. minimum 50 mil just for making it. But Auckland City, from where the best in Oceania, is going. But I was, just, I was just thinking, like, 50 mil for Real Madrid is nothing. That's, like, you know, drop in the water. But to bring that money to the New Zealand like football yeah. ladder is crazy. That's, like that. that's actually sick. Yeah, but, like, uh, there, there must be that, some ways... That's, that like, world changing. Yeah, there must be some stipulations that Oceania filters that money down through football because if Auckland just gets to keep that 
that's game over for the rest of the country. Like, how do you come back from that? But I think, but I think part of that is like there is like there is stipulations and there are responsibilities, but we've seen that it doesn't always go that way, right? It definitely doesn't go that way like, for the big leagues, but I think for these like small league like New Zealand, I think it definitely will. I think it'll just get split evenly amongst. All, That'll be good. All the I, 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 would, I, would, I would love to see that. Or something. I don't know. They, they, they have, I would love to see that. Mm. Um, did you see um, the A League had their youngest ever hat trick scorer? I I did not. I to be honest, I don't really keep up with the A League. So like, the I... he came on my radar. <laughs> Adelaide United won four one against Western, and this kid yeah. Destroy Aaron Kunda scores hat trick, youngest hat trick scorer uh, in A League history. Hell he's, really? actually, he's actually from Bayern's academy. He's he's one of their players. I think he goes back oh. at the end of the season. That's the only reason he's on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, th- I think that's cool in terms of how much loan experience has come to matter for the development of these kids. But yeah, yeah, not even just football. Like, Remember when um, Lonzo Lamella went to the A League, <laughs> the NBL or whatever? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Like, why wouldn't you? Yeah, like go be a pro. Yeah. Go be like it's not it's not the pro, but you're a pro. Like, go get go. paid. Yeah, go figure it out. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's cool though. Yeah, yeah. Youngest hat trick scorer, and it's because he's like actually from from a good squad, a good yeah, academy. Yeah. <laughs> Someone say one of the best academies in the world, but yeah. <laughs> Dope. That's um, so funny. Yeah, there, there's nothing else I had uh, on the agenda, so we can. Open yeah, up yeah. To, to free chat. I mean, this is like the first time we've like been able to get our thoughts down. So, is like, there anything you want to get like on record? Uh well, now that we're on football, <laughs> <laughs> like the game tonight. First of all, Who's do you playing? think it decides a lot? Uh, it's the Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah, that'll be main. Um. It'll be interesting to see how reserved they play. Like, are they going to go out and get the win, or are they going to try not concede? Yeah, I think, I think Arsenal walk into it looking a little bit better. Yeah, if that makes sense. Bro, the run they had before international break was crazy. Yeah, but like, and and it's not often. Like, I, I think it's been brought up as well that as a parallel to last season, it was. It looked as if they were just about to go down, and that's when they faced City, and that's when they started to fall to shit. Yeah. But this time, it feels like they're on the way up, and it looks like City's on the way down. Yeah. And City being and now it's a run in. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because it still feels like Arsenal don't know how to adjust their game plan. Like they'll just play the way they want to yeah. play. So it'll be interesting to see when they come up against an object where that's not possible. Do they have a plan B, C, and D to fall back on? Because like we we've seen a few yeah, like, yeah, not like, last season and this season when they came up against those hard games, they didn't really have a plan B to yeah whatever. yeah like, yeah they're either winning six 0 or they're not yeah exactly. <laughs> so yeah it's gonna be such a sick game and I as much as I really enjoyed this international break um yeah club football is the fucking best a hundred percent yeah. I, uh, do, do you think so do you think it determines much like does the result here determine much in the end or do you think that there's still a long way to it it's so hard if it had been any other year I would say it wouldn't determine anything because Man City could go win all their remaining games but just from what we've yeah. seen from Pep and Man City this season whether it's hangover from the treble or De Bruyne being yeah. injured or you know whatever it is all of them, all of them being injured, bro. Yeah. Like everyone is well, injured. Yeah. Like every player in the world's been injured this year. It's been That's crazy. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like um, everyone is injured. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're just talking about like Man City. It just they don't feel like they're going to have that last third of the season. Yeah. Up to like they're so used to seeing them run away with the league by this point. So usually I would say it doesn't mean anything, but I think if Arsenal can get a win here, not only will that give them the confidence to go forward, you've you know. You've got and do what we expect to do. Um, yeah, it's going to be sick. It's nice actually to have a bit of competition find... at the top of the table for once. Yeah, I agree. Where, where do you feel Liverpool sits on that? Um, they've been so inconsistent. Some, some games they look 
unbeatable. Some games they look fantastic, yeah. and then they go lose to us in the FA Cup. And it's just like kind of Arsenal like from last year. Yeah, I just yeah, I know and they've got this um, Klopp leaving at the end of season hanging over their heads. They're all feeling that pressure to make these cup runs mean something and try send them out on a win, and it just feels like it might be too much. Like you know, with Salah going away for Afcon and then coming back injured, um, I don't know it just feels that a little bit disjointed. I don't think they're going to be able to put that run together. Yeah. Well, sorry, you brought up you brought up Afcon and bro, it's just like I understand that we need to put an important like just an importance on Euros and Afcon and all that kind of stuff. But it's so inconveniently placed. Yep. Even the Asian Cup. Yep. Yep. It's so inconveniently placed, bro. It's so dumb. And especially we've talked about so, so much recently. The amount of strain on these players, the number of games they're playing. Um, now that uh, the Nations League counts for qualifying for the Euros and the World Cup. So all the international breaks now almost mean something. This last one was friendlies, which is the first time in ages we've had that. Um, yeah. All these players mean these games mean so much to these players. So they they play so many games a year, and then you're gonna have a World Cup where you've moved it to the middle of the season. We're gonna move things around for it, and then you have Afcon on the Asia Cup, and it's just my heart. I, yeah. My heart goes out to these players, and it's hard because you know they're multi millionaires and they get to kick a ball for a living. But at some point, there's got to be a breaking point, and it feels like we're reaching it. And the new Champions League format is coming out. I think it's next season or season after, and it is becoming pool play. So they're only adding two more games this time. But now that they've opened up to a pool as opposed to tables, uh, you know, groups of four, they can add as many games as they want. Oh, next season, we're just going to add an extra one. Oh, we're just going to add two more games. And then by the end of it, you know, these players are playing 80 games a season. (laughs) That's just... Yeah. Also, like, it's been buzzy. I I told you about my my FM run that I did. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's it's buzzy because my ideal way of, of playing FM now is literally having two like a first eleven and a second eleven like like this is this is when you're like winning. You have to like this is when you're like a big team. You know what I mean? And you you need to be able to put that second eleven out there and beat the beat the shit teams. Yeah. <laughs> Like, and no one needs to get mad about it. Like, you, you know what I mean? But, like, I, I think the reason I brought that up is because the way that FM naturally goes is your second 11 start to get real pissy. And yeah. I'm like, bro, like, everyone needs to just understand well, there's a first 11 and there's a second 11. And you can, like, it's it's not set in that sense. Yeah. But holy crap, bro. Like, everyone mm-hmm. needs to understand that you guys are still going to end up playing. Like, the way it works out for over a season is, like, 35 for the first 11 and, like, 25 for the second 11. Yeah, and but the crazy. And I'm like, bro, how could you not be like happy with playing time at that point? And but like the crazy thing is, in those runs, the second eleven will get sometimes three games in a row because it'll be like Carabao Cup and then two bottom teams, and they play for like a whole week. Yeah, and a half. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. That like like it, it it buzzes me out. Like obviously it's an algorithm and all that kind of stuff, but yeah, first eleven and second eleven is like the, if if I was just given a blank check to be the best football club in the world. That's what I would be, like, trying to build towards. Well, and that's exactly like a team that understands it in seconds. And that's exactly <laughs> what Man City have done for the last five, ten years, is they've had this beat. Yeah. Like, their subs would start in any other league in the world, and they're losing players like Palmer, who goes to Chelsea and is immediately Chelsea's best player. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> penalties and stuff. Like, not a high bar, but, like, like they're, they're academy players and they're bench players who are so often, like for the last five years, so happy to sit on the bench. You know, you don't yeah. really hear them kicking up a fuss about not playing, and yeah, they come on and it's a world class player on the bench. And then you look at our bench, and it's fucking Scott McTominay and some academy lads. It's... You look at our starters. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I don't want to talk about United. You know, yeah, no, I'm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm into helping in the right you know... place. <laughs> it's it's a uh, low hanging fruit. Um, no, I'm I'm still living on that Liverpool FA yeah. Cup win. <laughs> oh man, it's, oh, okay, yeah. outrage! Like the the feeling of how did we do that? To of course we did that. <laughs> we did that. Yeah, it's the classic. Um, like I had a feeling. Yeah. Uh, any other um, games coming up? Big games. I think I think Liverpool and Arsenal have to play at some point. 
which is going to be buzzy. Um, then we get to buzz in the somewhere. Champions League as well. Yeah, Real Madrid City. Like, I we I, I said this in text, but I think this is the the best time to be running into them. I think if you wait until July the thirtieth in the final, you've given them time to prepare. Once the season's over and they've finished all the other battles, yeah, that's the hardest time to play them. Right yeah. now, when they're fucking panicking and Arsenal are up their ass on the Premier League and all that kind of shit, like that is fucking tough. Yeah, <laughs> this quarterfinals for the um, Champions League looks sick. PSG Barcelona, yeah. we mean. Atletico yeah. Dortmund, we mean. And Arsenal Bayern Munich should be good as well. Um, have you, have you seen? Um, uh, there, there was a thing Bellingham and Saka, maybe after an England game or like in the changing rooms or just some banter moment that was caught. Um, Saka like explaining how they're not going to get past Man um, Man City, and then Bellingham just rattling off that bit Bayern like thrashed you eight two last time you played like like history. Like these guys were just like going back and forth on history, and it was sick. Like I, I thought it was so sick. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Saka was like trying to say how City are just a different beast and all that kind of shit, and he's like, "Bro, we've never lost a quarterfinal since 2000." And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> he gets it. He knows. Like, that's such a sick story. It's such a <laughs> sick story, and that he's bought into it already. It's his first season. He's just like, bro, we don't lose quarterfinals. No, but, like, <laughs> but he's been like that since the second he got there. Like, you know, calling, I love that. like grabbing these like experienced players by the collar to like pull them back from the refs, and like he's already just... been a leader. And so yeah, I found one of those cheap guys on the side of the street and bought my knockoff Real Madrid shirt with was, bowing him on the back. I was just about to say, bro, yeah. the, that's the jersey to have. It has that is like, the jersey to have. I love watching Vinicius play, but like to see him get all this racial abuse, but then to kind of instigate some instances as well. He just needs to sort some of that out and hopefully a player like Bellingham with that leadership can Kind of whip him right. Yeah, yeah. Um, with, with that focus, with that focus on that, I think yeah. I think with Mbappe coming, that will be buzzy too because that puts Vinny's place and you know what I mean. It's not so guaranteed. It's not just about him type thing. As much as the team is already a big a big unit, but he he feels like he's the spearhead, right? Yeah. You suddenly um, put Mbappe in there and Bellingham's, Bellingham's behind it. Like Vinny has to start thinking like, okay, do I really want to? be part of this. Yeah, and that's the thing. Kind of like when Ronaldo <laughs> came back to United for that second stint, Mbappe coming in is going to rock the boat like one way or the other. It's going to be oh, a splash. Hugely. So it's going to be interesting to see how Ancelotti can settle that landing. Manage that. Can he keep the team yeah. a team? Because they've well, been- uh, like the, the word that we used with Ronnie coming back the second time was gravity, right? Like we said gravity a lot because that's what he brought. And but, you're exactly right. That, that Mbappe feeling is going to change a lot. Yeah, I guess less so because Real Madrid already has its own gravity and Spain has its own gravity anyway. So Yeah, le- and, and Papa Fl- what, what, Florentino. Yeah, so it's definitely... <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be less of a disparity between the two gravities in this case. Yeah. But it's still going yeah. it's, nah. it's to affect it. So I'm very interested to see how it plays out. I I can't wait. Like like we were saying before, like I I think that's one of the, it, it's the starting of something fucking amazing. But especially it because, has all the buzz. especially because so many other clubs, particularly their rivals Barcelona, but even Bayern at the moment, there's still quite a few old players hanging on, and you know we don't have Cruz and Modric has already moved to a bench role. They're already phasing them out to get these young players in. Like, it doesn't seem like many other teams are up. doing that. Especially no, as well, they're not as full. I agree. Well, City, City, and City feel like they're in that part. Yeah. The only way City have a good season is if Foden just pops the fuck off and becomes well plays as the best player in the world. Yeah. Because I don't think you're going to get that out of Haaland as much this year. KDB injured. Yeah. Like, like, you know what I mean? The the defense is falling apart, kinda. Well, has been fucking slippy all season. Way more than we used to. More, more, yeah. Like it's, it's. <laughs> I'm, I'm not good at FPL, yeah. but I'm not betting on their defense right now. I thought you were going to do way better in fantasy this, this year. To be honest. <laughs> oh, bro, I've made so many bad like transfer decisions and like, you know, the the wild card. So yeah. I, I redid my whole team. Yeah. And then realized that it was the game week where there was only four teams playing. Yeah. And I didn't 
I didn't get to, yeah. I essentially I lost like fifty points on that. Like I've done that a million times this season. It's been yeah. so bad. It's so much fun. Oh, one hundred percent. Like I, I, as many times as I said I've quit, I still can have a look every <laughs> week and make a couple transfers. It's just you know, give it a go. Yeah. Um, to to be fair, I've watched a lot less because United have been the way that they have. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely but, watched much less Premier League this season just from being in Europe and started w- w- watching way more Real Madrid, been to an Atletico game or two. It's been, yeah. I think I, I think being being in touch or on pulse with the Real Madrid stuff is the place to be right now. Okay. This is the best I've ever been here. I'm not on it. I'm not on it, but I'm like, from from that perspective, like the, the, yeah, the way I'm saying, I, I haven't followed football as much this year, but I think just from that perspective, the place to be in terms of the pulse is definitely Madrid and Real. Like, there's there's no other project that looks as good because everyone else is downsizing. Everyone else is downsizing. Yeah, and and, guys are like, and you, they have to you, with you, these you. with these like financial fair play regulations. We've seen a couple of Premier League teams get pulled up for it already. It looks like at some point City are going to have to answer for these 115 charges or whatever. Every other club mm-hmm. is now realizing that they have to like pull back a bit. But Madrid have been, you know, looking at Mbappe for two seasons now. They've barely spent any money. They are so far in the, <laughs> like the green and the black. They are, they got no problems. Oh, they've nailed it, bro. Oh, their like, new stadium yeah. was sick. Like, so none of the screens are yeah. working. But once those screens are gone, that'll be amazing. But like, at the top, we were like we were right in the gods, but it felt like the Quidditch World Cup. They kind of like the stadium kind of like tapers out, so it's like you're right above the people below you, um, and yeah. you see everything. And like we, we were, I was having a discussion. That's what Hannah, Hannah was saying in her Snapchat. Yeah, I, I was like, it does feel like that. Like yeah. from yeah. that perspective that you gave us, so yeah. sick. And because so we've been to a few games over here, and we've you know I've sat right on the pitch sideline and sat sat up in the gods, and I was talking to one of the yeah. teachers at school and. We're saying, like, actually, Silicon Valley Gods is mean because you can actually see the formations and how the game's progressing yeah. and, like, the, the movement. Game. But you get so much more of the atmosphere when you're down on that ground level. So it's, yeah, that trade off. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, always, it's always a bit, like, it's the same it's the same with performances. Like, it, like when I was watching dance, I'd love to be up on the Gods. Like, I'd love that because I get to see what's actually happening and what the ideas are and, and all that kind of thing. Exactly. When, when you're, like, in the thick of it, like, you get to see like one person going ham or some shit but like that's not always what you're after no but yeah um and and saying that actually it's been really cool to be an assistant at a school during the season and hearing the kids talk about football like when adults talk about football it's so measured and it's so this player played well they could do better but the kids are just all about the emotion and my team's the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so fun to be back in that environment for a season like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the passion that they speak with, right? Like yeah. So many superlatives and shit. Yeah. Uh, I, I I definitely I definitely rate that. Yeah. Um yeah, I get so much shit when I wear my United kit. <laughs> to be fair though, it could yeah. be <laughs> Yeah. And it's so hard for you not to be wearing United kit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I still do I, I just kit. accept that today I'm gonna be getting shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to roll up with my uh, Real Madrid kit at That's... some point. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they'll be like fuck. Yeah. Well, only only half <laughs> yeah, than the other half of the school's Atletico fans. Uh, yeah, yeah, they were like, oh, fucking, yeah. yeah. And then there's the one kid that sports Barcelona. Boo. Yeah, he sits alone in the play- playground. <laughs> he eats lunch by himself. <laughs> it's because it's, he's, he's from there, but his parents got a job in Madrid. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I've got you on here. It's been three months now. So, what are you? What are your thoughts now that we've been able to process it on Penis? I think I still sit where I kind of initially st- stood on it. Like, it, there's there's a lot in there that I understand why it's there, but I wish it wasn't. Yeah. In terms of the direction that I wish Dave was going with a musical piece of. Or a musical offering, yeah. if that makes sense. Like less but, show orientated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like he says, he says a lot. Like, he says a lot of what J Cole was trying to say. Yeah. If we go back to who's the big three and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So he's 
he's on on par with what they're trying to claim. Yeah. But execution. When we were saying, yeah, when we were saying how um, I think Kendrick and J Cole feel like they think about their body of work and they see it and how they want it to end up and look. Yeah. I think they shape it a little bit, or they curate it. Maybe is maybe the word in a different way than he's presenting. I definitely think for what he's claiming. I think he did on professional rapper, and I think his maybe his goals have changed. That was his intent. Yeah. And yes. I agree, with that. He, I agree with that. He's so focused on the show and not just being a rapper and being an entertainer and everything um because but like he's got so many bars and so many songs on penis where he showcases what he can do um yeah and it hits i, I, and, it hits, but I, I don't feel like i feel like he does that every time yeah yeah i, I feel like he does that all the time like he, he's been doing that for years and that's why i say he's on par with what he's trying to claim yeah but i just think there's so much i think i think i said the word like it's got like some fat in it yep. in terms of like yeah, it's yeah. just it's just oh, some some waffle yeah which is also part of his style yep. which you know which is part of what makes you like love him yeah but yeah there's there's sometimes in there where you're like oh bro if you just if you cut it down to this this and this and then maybe did leap. one more that felt like this it would yeah it would it would be up to you like you could yeah. definitely offer it and be like this is pretty legit guys like yeah you could put it stand stand next to him have you, damn, watched, damn. have you watched the whole video for ha ha ha? Yes, like I've watched it twice. Like, I love the, the uh, the videos. I haven't seen anything. But he's he's out he's out the gate. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and and that's what I'm trying to say is that I can definitely agree with you that he has suddenly found like a bigger idea of himself, and it's not just trying to be a rapper or trying to be this that the other. So. Yeah. I don't I don't begrudge him that. No. I just from a music perspective in terms of because he's been talking about the album for a while as well. Yeah. Like I I I wish it was different. Yeah, it's like we lost a bit of the music, we've gained more uh him. We'll gain yeah, more of him, him for sure. But we've lost that bit of what made professional rapper such a good first album. Yeah. No, 100%. Like why he got that stamp of approval in the first place. But yeah. I think that's a net, uh, and and this is why I don't begrudge it, is because it's like a natural evolution, right? Like it's it's something that makes sense because he he fucking just found it natural. Yeah. Um, I realized I've started picking up heaps of Dave mannerisms, like when he talks, like with his hands, and like that's so funny. And I do like that little hand twirl, like um, yeah, you know, if I if I'm what wait, what, what is Dave on? Is it on Prime? I haven't paid for a streaming yeah, like, service in ages. <laughs> also, yeah, Mike just got Prime. I'm just trying to think if if Dave was there. Um, no, I think it's on. I think it's a Star, so it might be on Disney. Oh, wrong person yeah. asked. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Right. <laughs> Whenever you're just like pirate. <laughs> I got like, you. No, I got you. <laughs> um, but I'm currently working on a project where. In the next couple of years, you might not have to worry about that. <laughs> Watch the. <movie. laughs> I would, I would love that. Um, but yeah, no, D- Dave, I. So the the video for honestly, mm-hmm. is so like dear. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, yeah. I I love that. Like that that That's for me song. is the like the most honest. It's like honestly, it's yeah like <laughs> in the title right yeah. but it's like the purest hit of him that you could you know what i mean without being a bit weird about it it's <laughs> dave and little dicky is yeah yeah and then yeah gators in the background and hanging out and then fucking um benny's there as well like it just feels so authentic yeah. and i'm like that's it doesn't matter where you grew up whatever like what you do like that is what it is <laughs> That's what it is. That's just his version of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and I think that's what I mean about the fat on the album. Because yeah. he's got honestly, like he's got honestly on there, and I'm like, that's fucking beautiful. Like I love that. Need to be where is the Where that. is the rest of that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so yeah, has I got nothing else. And unless there's anything you want to bring to the table. Mm, nothing. 
nothing pressing nothing comes to mind nothing pressing cool all right well i guess that's a wrap on the first book club meeting the 91 yeah. nba yeah. finals and yeah, everything so we got two hours that's yeah. it yeah we nailed that's that. it um so yeah <laughs> come join us again for the next meeting where we'll be talking about the la lakers and their first of their three peats with kobe shack it's gonna be sick and then yeah as, I, as i'm sure we get yeah there we go <laughs> that jordan as well yeah yeah fuck yeah so good. <laughs> um yeah and then as we get closer to the 2024 finals we might pivot to to that but that's a bit that of a way off so we'll see how we go yeah a little bit. <laughs> cool. all right man well thanks for joining our meeting yeah that was fun yeah let's do it again sometime let's all right catch your dog peace we'll see you next time oh that was sick